Hey guys, Anthony 4B4Diesel, back to basics part two. If you haven't seen our other video, I think it's called, might be called, might have, if you search on our channel, back to basics or how an engine works, um, watch that one first. This is designed to go after that one. Uh, yep, it's the same engine, the same head. I've just spent literally about 10 minutes uh, reinstalling the head just loosely. It's all like finger tight sitting there type thing just to be able to explain a few extra things and show you a different picture of things. Okay, so part two. Anyway, uh, not a lot of planning went into this, so it's just what it is and you'll get what you get. Now, um, basically you can see the heads on. Now, with this engine, there's short head bolts, there's long head bolts. You happen to need a 14 mil, I think it was from memory. Uh, 12 point socket on those heads there. You want to have a quality one obviously if you're going to be removing and reinstalling You know not just some cheap thing whatever and it's going to need to be a decent size at least half inch drive so Don't worry about any of this if it's a bit messy This is the engine how it came apart and it's just sort of sitting there It's going to go to someone it's going to go to a new home hasn't got a new home yet at this moment making this video It's still for sale um, it's got one crack piston. and it's only done a hundred thousand K's. I believe everything's in good order You could probably throw a piston in it literally and not change anything else and it would probably run really well But obviously you would need to have a look at it probably worth spending some time give it a bit of a hone Maybe some rings as well and stuff like that. These things need to be checked and inspected, but it's a good low K engine and um, Yeah, a little bit of work but a bing the injectors in it are probably okay, but then again, they've been sitting around for a while, so I wouldn't trust them. Of course, you'd put new squirters in uh, good or near new engine. Okay, so part two about this engine. Of course, you've got the head on now, so you can see we had it off before, so you could see how the cylinders work, the pistons coming up, right? Now, this is the head. It's alloy, bolted down, as I said, with a gasket. Well, not this time. It's just actually sitting there. Like, these bolts are literally finger tight all the way in just so the head can't fall off so it doesn't lose its head <laughs> anyway um, the things I wanted to show you because I suppose the next part to it is at some stage we need to get we can have a look at um, connecting rods and stuff like that but the valve the timing and what goes on at the top of the engine with the camshafts and everything so firstly what's a camshaft well this is the camshaft here all right you can see it runs all the way along there's another one this is um, well basically many years ago when they came out known as this is when they say double overhead cam because a lot of engines used to have one camshaft there was less valves but a boom and obviously things changed efficiency or whatever things got better so more valves more cams and of course a lot of engines that have got um you know if they're the v or v8 configuration v6 whatever they may have four cams because there's two each side so it gets pretty complicated doing timing chains and timing belts and all that sort of thing once you've got almost like two engines at once kind of thing so anyway they're the camshafts so the what i'll just quickly go through how the valves work now in this engine the valve lifters are not there obviously those valve clearances would need to be reset um, if you're doing all this work on an engine you're going to reset those valve clearances back to ideal specification so the lifters aren't there but what normally would happen is basically Remember we said the idea was to get that crankshaft down the bottom there turning. You know, we showed you that round here at the front of the engine, the crankshaft down there. Um, while, okay, so that's turning. That's where the power is coming from. Now, mechanically, down the front of the engine, there's things connected via some gears, and that is basically to drive a couple of other pumps, the fuel, the supply pump, the uh, vacuum pump, the uh, vane pump, okay, generally. And then from there, your timing belt, which connects up here on the front of the camshaft with a gear down to, the, there's a gear that goes over the front of just about, kind of like right, right about here, not quite in the picture, that connects basically the bottom of the engine to the top, to this camshaft up here, all right? So then that's set up obviously in time so when the crankshaft's turning down the bottom you know the one that the pistons made turn um, it's connected to the top and all in the right time this camshaft will then turn and they're connected together with these gears here this one to that one right so they all need to be placed on in time and all that sort of thing in the right there's a couple little marks there that's another video but um and see these lobes you know cam lobes so on the camshaft if you can get the picture there's it's kind of like a point you know they're kind of like 
all the way around and at one side it's kind of it's kind of like that shape like that if you like so that's the cam lobe at that side as it comes around so there's only a certain point where it starts opening the valve it's got it all the way open and then it starts closing again so you can hopefully see what's going on with those lobes there we can probably look more into camshafts another day so the timing of that turning the camshaft and those lobes they press on the valve lifters which are i don't know again we said this in another video i don't know why they call them lifters but anyway um even if it's push rods and whatever they're still not lifters anyway they're kind of like a mm, kind of like a spacer between the camshaft and the anyway whatever that's another story the point is the lobes on the camshaft push the lifters which pushes the valves and they've got a spring which retains them shut so their normal position is closed the way you saw them in part one and when the camshaft comes around that lobe pushes down against the spring obviously it's stronger than the spring and opens up the valves all in the right time so that's kind of like the operation of how the valves open and close to allow the air to go in this side on the inlet side even though you'd think it's an exhaust because it's dirtier than the exhaust side right but yes this is the inlet side um it's that egr exhaust gas recirculation disgusting idea problem that we've talked about many times before including the previous video um so really i, I don't know uh, what else what else can we tell you so we've got the camshafts open the valves you got that part so you get the valves we we probably need some components don't we? we need to have a look at some valves some conrod some bits and pieces so you know what they are um, i know a lot of people know what i'm talking about and so plenty of people know more than me of course but um this is for the people that want to refresh a course or they were pretty sure um but they weren't 100 percent sure all the people that have got no idea hopefully it was simple enough to explain that was step one step two valve timing obviously um and if you're wondering what's going on here obviously these are your injectors remember in part one we showed the injectors i i pumped one of the injectors not one of these but a injector and you saw so that's where that all goes down the middle of the head and you can see when the head was off where the injection point was if you like at the nozzle there um, these are obviously the clamps that hold the injector down they clamp the injector at the top there and the other end of it goes over the top of the bolts as I said these are all just sitting in finger tight I think the middle one went in a bit further because I sat the injectors in as well but literally you can see look you know they're just it's all just sitting there everything's just loosely sitting there it's a bit like a play engine at the moment but anyway um, if anyone's interested in this engine let me know that's pretty well what you got as it sits and good enough to rebuild and have a spare engine this engine with um, you know a good rebuild engine you know they seem to go for about five grand um, so this engine considering the small amount of work it needs 99.9% um, .9 sure because it's just got one crack piston um, you know small amount of work and some parts and you know you've got a sort of a four thousand dollar engine for what could cost you i reckon under a thousand bucks so anyway just thought i'd put it out there um while we're talking about this valve clearance situation now what are the lifters well some lifters are hydraulic okay and some are solid in this engine they're solid lifters right and the way they're adjusted is by replacing them so you measure the distance the clearance between the camshaft okay and when it's not, when the lobe is not near the lifter, okay, you're measuring the clearance, right? So, kind of like um, what happens is the valves, I don't know if we're getting too technical here, but what happens is the valves, the seats of the valves, they're like a tapered seat and they do wear from all this wear and tear, from all this dirty exhaust you know dry soot and whatever going in a bit like dust and stuff like that where's those valve seats down and that allows the valve seats remember they were sitting flat on the inside of that head they sort of like come up a little bit exaggerated they sort of come up so then that means the end this end of the valve there right the valve stem it's coming up close to the camshaft which closes the valve clearance so therefore we need to put a thinner lifter close that from say that down to get our correct valve clearance back again anyway but I think we don't want to get too technical here. I just wanted to sort of talk about, keep this one pretty short and explain how this camshaft is connected by what's happening down at the bottom end. So the bottom end is what made the power, got things going, whatever the case may be. And there's a whole, there's just a whole heap of other systems in place. Once all this starts happening, there needs to be lubrication, okay? So that's where your oil comes in, your oil pickup, pumping oil around. Um, and of course, 
there's still a lot of heat generated, so it needs to be cooled down as well, which is where all your coolant, your cooling system comes into it as well. So if we get time, we'll do some other videos going a bit more in detail, more about the cooling system, the oil system, some of the cooling and lubrication passageways and what can happen to engines. What are the first things to go when there is a lack of lubrication or lack of cooling? Um, just trying to think. Um, that's about it in case you're wondering. So with your injectors while we're at it, right? So where the red caps are, normally with the valve cover would be on. Where the red caps are, that's where the fuel goes in. That's your fuel inlet pipes from the common rail. Okay, through to the injector. It does its job um, injecting the fuel and then the, re the leftover fuel return fuel goes along this rail here, along there, around, into there, through a little port in the head, out that hole there, and there's another fuel pipe that comes out along here on the outside of the manifold back down long story back to the tank um, but yeah a few little detours along the way and it gets cooled down on the way back because the fuel obviously becomes hot going through here so it's actually also helps with cooling as well so there you go um, there's also an oil gallery that passes by the injectors it's a bit like a lot of the things it's not just about cooling it's about warming but it's about cooling as well okay so it's about getting everything to the optimum running temperature not just about making it run hot or cold or whatever it's about optimal temperature all right guys hopefully that's been helpful as a part two talking a bit about that where that all connects up and how this is the mechanical side of it how the valves operate i suppose between the two videos that's in a big part most of the mechanical part that matters if you know what i mean so we've got a little bit going on the front of the engine here you know you've got balance shafts and that but you know all that stuff and the gearing for the to drive the other bits and pieces it's not really a standard part of any particular engine you don't have to have that you could not have that gear if you know what i mean and the basics of what you need to know is what we talked about the cylinders the pistons you know we could go more into detail when we've got some components talking about rings pistons con rods and those bearings and that sort of thing so stay tuned for the next one um like usual if you haven't already subscribe turn that bell on and when the next one comes through you'll get an email bing next video all right guys if you got something out of that please give us a thumbs up so we know we're doing the right thing and bada bing bada boom catch up